Hi! In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to create some nice looking lace. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. Alveolus is a soft sphere pattern that can alternatively generate hexagon tiles. Is used to switch to sharp edged hexagon tiles. Interstice width changes interstice size and only works if the gradient filled cell switch is set to true. The multidirectional warp node is a great node to warp shapes in an interesting way. It distorts your shape in a few set directions based on an intensity input. Warp angle is used to adjust the warp directions. With mode I have control over the blending behavior. Average is more of a soft distortion, max extends, min eats away and chain easily gives you a really intense distortion. The bevel node performs an edge beveling effect on a high contrast input map. Distance adjusts the bevel effect range. The smoothing parameter controls the blur intensity which is added after the beveling effect. The tile sampler node is a powerful node to make regular or random patterns. It's an advanced version of the tile generator node with more controls and inputs. The rotation vector map multiplier is great to control the flow of the structure. It needs a normal or vector map as input. Let's build this lace fabric setup together. You can reuse it later as starting point for more complex ones. For the base color we choose a light desaturated yellow, increase the normal intensity to 5, push the roughness value to 175 for rougher structure, Add the RTAO node and decreasing the height scale to 0.005 to avoid overwhelming shadows. We further add an output node to use for the opacity. For the base of our lace pattern we use an alveolus node with a tiling of 100, switch gradient filled cells for sharp shapes and increase the interstice width to 0.6 for thicker lines. Let's invert it with an invert node and continue with a transformation to denote to tile it by 2. Now we connect it to a warp node for some deformation. Use a pearly noise node with a scale of 150 as input and tweak the intensity to 0.001. For the pattern base we drag and drop the ornament pattern into the graph, choose import resource and tile it by 2. Then let's add a bevel node with a negative distance of minus 0.003 to bevel inside and a moving value of 0.2 for the mask base which will help us blending additional details in later. Now is a good moment to reorganize it slightly. To get the base for the stitches we add a fibers 1 node and forward it to a blend node. As foreground we use a by 90 degrees rotated gradient linear 2 node and switch the mode to multiply which helps us to round the sharp borders. Then we connect it to a tile sampler node to splatter the fibers. Use shift and left mouse button to drag and drop it into the pattern input and switch the pattern to pattern input. For rotation and vector map preparation we take the pattern and connect it to the bevel node. Let's tweak the distance to minus 0.003 and smoothing to 0.75 for a smooth bevel, which helps for the vector rotations later on. We increase the x and y amount to 800 for more and smaller stitches, reduce the size y to 0.66 to make the shape thinner and increase the scale to 4. A position random value of 0.2 is nice to randomize it. Now we connect the bevel output to the rotation and vector map inputs. Increase the rotation map multiplier to 0.2 and the vector map multiplier to 0.6 to control the flow based on the pattern shape. Let's add the lace pattern to the mask map input. Increase the mask map threshold to 1 to make them appear where the pattern is and add some color randomness with a value of 0.3. Now we blend the base lace together with the stitches in max lighten blending mode. Let's again reorganize it. To deform the pattern for additional threads we use a multi-directional warp node. Let's bevel again the mask for the threads with a distance of 0.01 and a smoothing value of 0.6 for a bigger smoother mask. For more variation we blend it with the pearly noise in multiply blending mode. This is a great mask to use as intensity input. 
Let's decrease the intensity to 1.65, adjust the angle to 125 and switch to max mode for nice details. We now blend it together with the not deformed lace and use the details mask as opacity input. This results in really nice additional strands just around the pattern. We connect it to a levels and adjust the level in low to 0.075 and the level in high to 0.6 for sharper contrast and multiply it using a blend node. As foreground we push the crispness of the stitches with a sharper node and a value of 10. Further let's connect the stitches to a histogram scan node to control the mask. Increase the position to 0.5 and the contrast to 0.9 and use this as opacity input. Finally we connect it to the opacity output and the lace to the AO and normal node. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.